I want to talk to you a little bit tonight. Uh, I'm going to uh, take my text in John, the seventh chapter, 37, 38th verse. It says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his be belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the, I'm, I'm going to get back to this in just a few minutes, but I want you to keep this thought in your mind. Living water in this passage is, re is referred to as the Spirit of God. So I want you to keep that in mind. Living waters is the Spirit of God. It's referred to in the Bible several times as the Spirit of God. So uh, I guess the first place really that water is mentioned in the Bible that I, I could find was in uh, in Genesis chapter one and verse number two. And it says, "And the earth was uh, was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters." So I, I begin to read this. That's that is amazing. That happened in the first day of creation. Water in the first day of the creation. There's so many scriptures in, in the Bible about water that uh, I couldn't be here all night all night because I could talk and talk and talk about scriptures in the Bible about water. Um, you know, I've always been the kind of person that really enjoys just taking stuff apart, working on it, seeing how it works, put it back together. You know, and when God began to deal with me on this script on uh, on this message about water, my mind began to just wander like all different kinds of directions. I mean, I had no idea where I was going. And uh, I believe Brother Dansby was preaching the night that God gave me this message. It's been a while back. And I told him before, I said, if you see me back there with my phone, don't think I'm texting anybody. Because I don't have Facebook. I don't have Twitter. If y'all do, that's okay. I don't. But any time God gives me a little thought, I want to jot it down. Because I'm getting older and my mind's going a little bit crazy. So I have to write things down or I forget it. Amen. So I just began to think about uh, everything, you know, that really uh, piqued my interest. And um, so I began to notice a lot, of, uh, a lot of similarities between the spiritual and the physical when it comes to water. It's essential in both cases, whether you're in the spiritual or the physical. Water is so essential to both cases. The parallels of water of physical and spiritual when it comes to water run hand in hand all throughout the Bible. And I found it very interesting that uh, water is mentioned 722 times in the Bible. That's more, that's more times than um, faith, hope, prayer, and even worship. That says a lot. It's a key, it's a key ingredient that we must have. We cannot do without. Our bodies can't do without water. Even though our bodies are made up of mostly water. And I began to study out a few things. Uh, so 60% of the human body 
is made up of water, according to the Journal of Bi Biological Chemistry, 158. Since the brain and the heart are composed of 73% water. Did y'all know that? I didn't know that. Sister Teresa probably knew that. She's a nurse. I didn't know that. I was a, just, man, that's great. The lungs are made up of 83% water. Now, my little granddaughter, when she took her breath, she was in water, and when she came out, they say that you're, you're, you're a, a baby, when a baby is born, it breathes in fresh air as soon as it's born, and their lungs inflate. But what happened to her, her lungs inflated, and then they deflated. They didn't work properly. So it's essential in life, you know, it's, it, water is just essential. So let's, let's go on down. It says in the... Um, It says the muscles in the kidneys are 79% water. Your bones are 31% water. It says on an average, a person can live between three days and a week without water before their body starts going into shock. And uh, you, you're basically going to die if you don't get it. There's no way around it. Uh, if y'all will uh, indulge me just a few minutes, I got a, uh, something I would like to do. I got a per couple of participants. Uh, Brock and Kyle, y'all want to come help me out? Come on and help me out. All right. What I want y'all two to do is start right here and just run around the church. Just go ahead. Take off. Go that way. Go that way. It don't matter. Just go the same way. Just run, run, run. So I love illustrations. I don't know about everybody else, but I love illustrations. I love when ministers use illustrations. Look like he's going to catch her before she, she gets around. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i think he's gonna catch her i think he's gonna gonna do it so in john the fourth chapter while they're running in the 14th verse it says but so whoever drinketh of the water that i shall give him shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life in Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, the 25th verse, it says, Then I will, I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. And Isaiah, the 12th chapter, the 3rd verse, it says, Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. That's pretty good. Joy out of the wells. Okay, when y'all get back, you can stop. Just to show you how essential water is, can you open that? Can you open it? Open that up and hand it to her. Open this up. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. Just hold it. Don't drink it. Here's one for you. Don't drink the water yet. Now, what I want you to do is take that water, put a little bit in your other hand. Just throw this over your shoulder. Here. Put a little bit in your hand. Put a little bit of water in your hands. I'm going somewhere. Just put a little bit of water. There you go. That's okay. It'll dry. All right. Now, why don't you do splash your face with that? Put it on your face. Come on. Now, does that feel good? Does that feel refreshing? Feels good, huh? Okay, set your bottles down. Did that help you thirst? A little bit refresh you a little bit? Okay. Now, run again. Go. Take off. Go. So in Psalm 23 and 2, he says, He maketh us to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside the still waters. Matthew 10 and 42 says, And so whoever shall give him to drink unto one of these little, uh, little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of, his, of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in, in no wise lose his reward. You can stop. You can stop. All right. Now take your drink of water. Take your big drink of water. Y'all thirsty? There, just uh, that better. You feel better now. Better than splashing it on you, right? Okay. All right. You can set the water. You can take the water with you. Just take the towels too. I'll get them later. So I'm going somewhere with this. I'm, I really am. I'm going somewhere with this water, with this water in this race. 
You know, when you run, you get thirsty. You know, we're all running a race. We're running a race tonight. So I, I want to be thirsty after the things of God. So in Acts 2 and 17, I want to read this scripture to y'all. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, God saith God. This is not any, any disciple talking. This is God talking. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall see dreams. So the real truth about things is right now, uh, a lot of people in, in this world, they go to church as a social thing. It's just social for them. And the problem with that is, is they never get, they only get the Spirit of God, which is the water. We talked about it earlier. I thought you'd remember that. It references the Spirit of God in the Scripture. He said, I pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. So, this deal with the water thing here, just to explain this to you. You can get a little bit of the Spirit on you, and it'll feel good for a while. And you can go a little bit farther. But when you get it down inside of you, when you get that water, that Spirit of God down inside of you, there's something about it that will sustain you for a long time. It'll, it'll keep you going when you, when you feel like you're going to fall. This water will keep you going. So right now, people are going to church as a social thing. They want to go there so people can see them and say, oh, I've been there. But they want to get that water. They want to get that Spirit just on them. They don't want to get it inside of them. Unfortunately, we're living in the last days. The scripture tells us we're living in the last days. And I believe we're living in the last days. But it's so important not to just get the water on you. Not to get the Spirit of God on you. It's so important to get it down inside of you. Because I told you before, water is so essential spiritually and physical. You have to have the water in order to get into heaven. And you have to have the water in order to survive here on earth. And without that water, you're not going to make it in either place. So in John chapter 3, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. You know, I believe if I was Nicodemus, I would probably ask the same thing if I didn't know. How can, you, how can that be? So Jesus began to explain to him. And he answered, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth and listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So this scripture right here was talking about, Nicodemus had a good question about the being born again. If you don't get that water, if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus with, for the remissions of your sins, I hate to tell you, but you're not going anywhere. If I hadn't followed this, this scripture, if I hadn't done that, I'm telling you today, I would not be here. But there's something about when you get that Spirit of God upon you and inside of you. It makes a difference. It makes a difference whether it's just on you or in you. And it all, it's all very important with the water. So then Peter said unto them, repent. That's asking for forgiveness for your sins. That's what it means to repent. You tell God you're truly sorry. And you have to mean that with all your heart. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, I believe that when, in Matthew, I believe that that's what he was talking about when he said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. He's talking about this scripture right here. The key to getting into heaven, into the kingdom, is you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. You have to repent of your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. That scripture right there. There's no way around that. If you're not baptized in the name of Jesus, you're not filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I hate to tell you, but you're not going anywhere. 
tonight, I don't, I don't want to be just blunt, but I'm telling you, I feel like that we need to understand that there's something about the water. There's something about the water that we need. We don't need it to sprinkle it on us, but we need to be sm submerged into the water. We need to have that Spirit of God, that living water. We need to have that down inside. If we don't have it down inside, we're not going anywhere. And I don't know about you, but I don't like it when it gets hot. I can't hardly stand it right now. I can't imagine going to hell. I really can't. If the air conditioner's not working, I'm, I'm throwing a fit. Man, somebody turn the fan on, something. Get me cool. Splash me with some water. At least I can go a little bit farther. But I'll tell you right now, if, if we could just understand that it takes the water. It takes the water to get where you need to go. You know, water will do your body good. But water will also do your spirit good. You know, we got to have the gift of the Holy Ghost, folks. We have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. It's so important. I know I, I keep talking about the scripture, but there's something about the water. There's something about when you go down in that water. And when you come up, you're so clean. You feel so good. There's no hatred. You love everybody. There's, there's no despair. There's no depression. You feel joy. When you go underneath that water, there's something about it. And then when God fills you with His Spirit, that living water, He's telling you, when you get filled with the Spirit, then you can go out and you can preach to this lost and dying world. It's so important, folks, today. we got to remember, we have to get into the water. We have to get into the Spirit of God. We can't just let it get on us. But it's got to get in us. I want to love the Lord with everything I have. I want to give Him everything I have. But most importantly, I want to follow the Scripture. I want to follow that Scripture. I want to repent. I'm, I'm telling you, I've been serving the Lord for a long time. Have I been perfect? No. Has anybody else in here been perfect? No. If you're honest with yourself, you ain't been perfect. None of us have. But the good thing about it is, is we can go to a God. It's not just somebody made up. We can go to a God when we say, Jesus, I'm so sorry. Like he's saying tonight, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. And he'll look down and he'll say, it's okay. Come on up here. Tonight, my little grandson was having some issues about his guitar playing. He was, I don't want to embarrass him, but he was kind of feeling bad. He was a little nervous about it. But you know, that's what God does. God says, come on. I began to tell him, come on over here. I said, listen, you just play for, you play for God in your sin. You don't worry about anybody else sitting in here. And that's the way you got to be with God. You don't worry about what everybody else is doing in this place tonight. But I want you to ask yourself this question. If God come back right now, where would I be? Would I make it to heaven? You have to ask yourself that question. I know it's blunt, but we have to ask ourselves that. If God come back right now, where would we be? Where would we stand? Tonight, I want to go to heaven. And there's nobody, nobody in this building tonight I want to see go to hell. I want to see everybody in here go to heaven. But we have to have that water. It's got to be inside of us, folks. It's got to be inside of us. If we want to get to heaven, we've got to obey the Scriptures. And I'm so thankful for a church that preaches the oneness doctrine and preaches Scripture. You see, when we preach something, it's not something that's made up and fabricated. You can get your Bible and you can read it for yourself. Everything I read to you tonight is in there. If we could, I know it's early still, folks. If we could, let's just find us a little place. You don't have to get up. You don't have to kneel. God can touch you right where you're at. Let's just begin to pray just a little bit. Let's give God a little bit of glory, a little bit of time tonight. 
I, I know everybody's ready to get out and get a hot dog. And uh, that's all good. But I'm telling you right now, a hot dog won't get me to heaven. And there's some things I need to correct in my life. I know you're saying, Brother David, you just got through ministering. But that don't make me perfect. Being a minister does not make you perfect. As a matter of fact, it probably makes you more imperfect. Because when God gives you something, you have to apply it to your life before you can preach it. I told my son and I, I said, I'm a little nervous. You see, you nervous? I said, I'm always nervous. Because whatever I say, I'm going to be held accountable to it in the end. And I'm telling you tonight, I don't want to see anybody lost in here tonight. If you could, let's just go to the Lord a little bit. and Let's just have a seasonal prayer.